It's the weekend, the weekend of July 19th. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot. Now, in case you don't know what I do on this show, I just share my own personal due diligence on what I think is a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. I post a lot of information about penny stocks, and I'm always looking for a hot penny stock. Penny stocks are any stock under five bucks, and they're everywhere. They're on every single market. And I'm constantly looking for hot stocks by looking at my charts. I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time. I'm looking for breakout setups. I'm looking for big bounces, trying to catch it at the bottom. Stocks that have been running for days. Well, when you see a chart that looks hot to you, take the time to go through their filings and press releases. See if you can find some hot information. You get some hot information to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And I've got one for you today. I'd like to say I found it, but I didn't. This came from Mustafa Tekin. This was a comment on my YouTube channel. He brought to my attention Interactive Strength, ticker TRNR. Now, I have talked about this sometime in the past. I can't remember when, so I am familiar with this company. They are dealing with particular pieces of exercise equipment as we're going to focus in on. But it is the chart that got my attention. Oh my God. This thing looks like a 9.2 out of 10 ready to break out. It is my favorite, an atypical breakout chart. That's when you got that 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious and you got your price deep underneath it. And they're both falling for a very long time. Then the 200 starts to level out and go flat. Gets all that weight off the price so the price can turn up finally and start to climb. And then it cuts through that 200 and that's when you get your breakouts. And that's exactly what's going on right now. So Interactive Strength, ticker TRNR, she finished today just under 94 cents and she was up almost 34% on Friday. This is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. That's my favorite penny stock. I do trade the OTC, but boy, folks, there's a lot of dangers, a lot of risks down there. On the major exchange, first off, it's free to trade. You don't have to pay to buy your shares or sell your shares. You get to trade pre-market, after-market. Folks, I'm telling you, there is a lot of money to be made in those periods of time. Some of the biggest bounces I've ever seen happen pre-market, after-market. And you do not need special permission, special qualifications to trade those periods. Just get in there and trade. The one thing I got to tell you, though, is before you put your orders in, make sure you change the time period. It's not a day trade. It's an extended period trade. Now, I don't know how your broker has it set up. It may be EXT. It may say after hours, extended period, whatever it is. You got to have it in there or your order will not be seen. Plus, folks, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchanges. That's where you want to be trading. And last but definitely not least, there's a lot more rules up on the major exchange. And that's what keeps us safe. So what is TRNR all about? Well, let's start right here with this description. Interactive Strength is doing business as For Me and operates digital fitness platform that provides connected fitness hardware products and related accessories in the United States. It offers the For Me Studio, a fitness mirror with touchscreen display, and the For Me Studio Lift, a fitness mirror and cable-based digital resistance. The company also provides video on-demand classes and personal training and expert health coaching services all through the mirror. The company sells its products through the retail stores as well as online. Now, we're going to get another description that gives us more information because they're dealing with more than just one product, and they only talk about the one here. But we get more information when we dive into the description inside one of their newest press releases. They tell us here that Interactive Strength produces innovative specialty fitness equipment and digital fitness services under two main brands, Climber and For Me. They tell us that Climber is a vertical climbing machine that offers an efficient and effective full body strength and cardio workout. Climber's design is compact and easy to move, making it perfect for commercial or in-home use. With its low impact and ergonomic movement, Climber is safe for most ages and levels of ability and can be found at gyms and fitness studios, 
hotels, physical therapy facilities, as well as in the consumer's homes. For Me is a digital fitness platform that combines premium smart gyms with live virtual personal training and coaching to deliver an immersive experience and better outcomes for both the consumers and the trainers. The mirror obviously is reflecting your image, but built right into the mirror is a screen that you can't see. It's hidden in there, but you can see all the pictures of your trainers, your coaches, whatever it is they want to show you. And this also comes with the climber. It's an add-on if you want to put a monitor up there so that you can have coaches, training, and whatever else you want to do. Now, from what I understand, this is connected to Ethernet, Bluetooth, so it's connected to the internet so that you can connect to the cloud and get all of their coaching programs and exercise programs and all that good stuff. But it also connects to other things like your music. You want to listen to Pandora, iHeart, YouTube, and who knows? Maybe it connects to television since that's online. Maybe you can talk to people while you're exercising if you want to. I'm not saying it can do that. I'm just wondering why couldn't it? They go on to tell us that 4Me delivers an immersive and dynamic fitness experience through two connected hardware products. The 4Me Studio Lift, which is the fitness mirror and the cable-based digital resistance, or you can just have the mirror. In addition to the company's connected fitness hardware products, Forme offers expert personal training and health coaching in different formats and price points through video on demand, custom training, and live one on one virtual personal training. So that's really where they're making their money. They sell products, but behind those products, you get this live coaching, one on one training. You get all of that extra stuff that you have to pay for every time you use it. Now, each one of these brands has got its own website, climber.com and formelife.com. We're not going to go over there. I've pretty much given you as much information as you need to understand what it is that they're doing. Now, I want to share with you what they're doing with it. So, we're taking a look at the news here. The one thing I noticed from all of this news is that they're only talking about one product, the Climber. We don't see anything mentioned here about For Me. And looking at the revenues, I got to wonder how successful it's been. But looking at all the news, Climber is a whole different story. Climber is getting a lot of attention globally. So I have come all the way back here, all the way. I am just back to June 11th. We are going to take a look at four of these pieces of news, jumping into them. But I do want to highlight each one and give you a little bit of information. June 11th, they announced a 1 and 40 reverse stock split, which they did on the 14th of June. That brought their outstanding share count under a million, 664,000. That is super duper low, folks. And it has stuck there for a while, but that has just recently changed here because of the public offering they just did for $4 million. And I do believe that is just about 2.2 million shares that they've added. So now we're closer to 3 million shares instead of 600,000 shares. Um, on June 18th, the company and Woodway successfully complete Climber Group Fitness Pilot with Crunch Fitness. Do you want to read this one? I've never heard of Crunch. Crunch West Hollywood has successfully completed a group fitness pilot of 11 climbers and has purchased those units in addition to two additional climbers on the cardio floor. Crunch Fitness is considering locations for future group fitness pilots. There are more than 460 locations and 2.5 million members in the Crunch Fitness system. Woodway is the exclusive worldwide service and distribution partner for Climber. Now, down here, they tell us that Woodway is a state-of-the-art treadmill manufacturer specializing in custom hand-built treadmills for over 40 years. When you look at all the pictures of their equipment, you basically see three types of equipment. The 4 me mirror, the climber, and you see a treadmill or something like that. And it's like, well, whose is that? That's where it's coming from. It's coming from Woodway. They tell us that Crunch is one of the fastest growing gym chains in the U.S. and has been recognized as an innovative leader in the industry for a long time. And they are in there with them right now. Now we've got two pieces of news here that have to do with Gold's Gym. Actually, we have got three. 
The company and Woodway successfully complete multi-location climber pilot with Gold's Gym in Southern California and receive orders to install multiple units in every location. The company and Gold's Gym South California successfully complete the multi-location climber pilot program, leading to the largest climber order since their acquisition of climber. So we've got a big deal going on with Gold's Gym, and I'm going to dive into this information up here because the most recent piece of news fills us in on what happened back here. Then we've got another deal here that happened on July 9th. Interactive Strength secures exclusive distribution for climber and fast-growing golf region with MeFit Pro and receives six-figure initial order. Well, you got to figure a six figure initial order has got to be 100,000 minimum. Who knows exactly? MeFit Pro, based in Dubai, is the leading distributor of best-in-class brands in the golf region and will represent Climber exclusively. Golf countries are growing quickly and fitness adoption is outpacing GDP growth, so people are wanting to get more healthy than spend money. MeFit Pro placed six-figure initial order that is expected to ship in the third quarter of this year. We're heading into that right now, folks. We are expecting to sell to at least 10 international distributors or key accounts this year. We expect to receive the required certifications to sell to Europe in the third quarter, and that certification will allow distributors to fulfill demand indications we received at two different places this year. After the U.S., the U.K., Germany, France, and Spain are some of the biggest fitness markets in the world, and we believe we have potential customers eager to order climbers for those markets. And that last piece of news is about Gold's Gym. Interactive drives climber growth with new Gold's Gym's Texas installations, following the six-figure order from Gold's Gym Southern California. Gold's Gym is installing multiple climbers in three Central Texas locations initially, and there is a potential of 58 total locations in Texas. Gold's Gym Southern California is installing multiple climbers in each of its 23 locations in California. There are more than 600 locations overall for Gold's Gym. We hope to expand the climber installations to other 55 Gold Gyms locations in Texas and then to more of the Gold Gyms 600 plus locations. So you're wor working with Crunch, you're working with Gold's Gym, two of the largest organizations for health here in America. Then you've got Misfit Pro, is that what they call it, over in Dubai for the golf. They're the biggest over there and they are penetrating the European markets, many countries on their list. So I don't see a lot going on for for me. The mirror doesn't look to be all that bloody hot. I don't know why, but the climber is. And that has taken off right now with a lot of huge six-figure orders. So this is a company we need to be watching for. Those are a lot of different catalysts that can get this stock moving. Now let's take a look at information about that stock. What was the relative volume for the company today? Eh, I'm saying Friday, not today. She fell about 20% of her regular volume, going from about 2.5 million a day over the last 30 days to just under 2 million on Friday. Now, speaking about the volume, I've jumped over here to Yahoo Finance, which if you go under historical data, you can get every single day's activity for the stock. You can see what it opened at, what its high was, its low, what it closed at, and the volume. And the volume is something I always like to look at because they don't break it down anywhere like that. You could probably figure it out in the chart, but this is a heck of a lot easier. What I've noticed, it's very sporadic. We are at about 2 million right now. That jumped from 1.6, but look how low she was for the four or five days before. Then we had some humongous volume, 3, 2, 15 million. Then we fall back under a million for a long time. June 17th. 44 million shares for Pete's sake. What a jump from 345,000 to 44 million back down to 1 million. You never know when it's going to pop. Now, the other thing I want to draw your attention to here, look at the price. This is where she opened. 
72, 84, 81, 90. I'm going to scroll. Watch those numbers, folks. Wow, right? We're up to $6, $8, $10, $12, $20, $28, $30, $35, $40, $45, $50, $60, $70, $80, $90, $100, $120, $130, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $
You sell on the way down, you're losing money putting in your order. Here, you're gaining money as you're putting in your order. Just makes sense to me, folks. Market cap, well, you can't trust that number. Market cap is figured out by taking all the outstanding shares and multiplying it times the price. Well, we know the outstanding share counts close to three million and the dollar is close to a dollar. So let's say close to three million is our market cap. Financials for TRNR. Well, she was making nothing back before during COVID 2020. Started making money, jumped up to three hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars in twenty twenty-one. We know it's thousands. You've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. She then doubled that to six eighty-one, and then kicked it up to almost a million. But what's going on? She's losing all kinds of money. She isn't even making a million dollars, and she's losing millions of dollars. That's not exciting. Let's take a look at her quarterlies. <sighs> Same thing here. We are at a low of $157,000. We hit a high of 363. That was our last quarter reported. But again, we're losing a lot more money than we're making. Something's going wrong here. Take a look at that balance sheet. Well, they've got nothing in the bank. Absolutely zero. Do they even have a bank account? <laughs> you got to keep something in it to keep it open. Total assets, we're at about 40 million. Total liabilities, ooh about 40 million. It's about 300,000 above it. Uh-oh, we've got some extra numbers came into play here. We would have had stockholder deficit of about $300,000, but it's closer to $3 million. That's what we're holding for the company, $3 million worth of deficit. Take a look at those disclosures for the company. We got a lot of disclosures here. We could go through but believe it or not, each one of these disclosures correlates to a piece of news which we've already looked at. So that saves us a heck of a lot of time. But you don't always know that. So when you're doing your DD, even after you read the news, just pop into an 8K. They're pretty short. All you got to do is come down to that big bold line right there. And if you see material change or something like that, or contacted by the NASDAQ, you probably want to read that. But if you see something about bylaws or management, it's all important, but you may want to bypass that. So I didn't see anything else here I thought worthy of sharing with you. So there you go, folks. We do have a super duper low float. It's three million or less. They have put more shares on the market. They just did a reverse stock split. So we've pretty much got those things out of the way. Now they've got multiple contracts with multiple companies around the world who are very excited about their climber. We don't see any news about for me, but Climber is taking off and they do need a change in their revenues. And they already told us they've got two contracts that are in excess of six digits, which is a hundred thousand or more. Could be up to 999,000, just under a million, who knows? But the big deal is, is that we've got catalysts on top of a hot chart. That makes all the difference, folks. When you have a hot chart, think of it as a campfire. How much wood do you have to throw on that campfire to make it bigger? Not much. Any piece of wood will make it bigger, but the bigger the wood, the bigger the fire. Well, we've got lots of pieces of wood here to throw on that fire. I think she's going to burn. I think she's going to start to rip now, folks. Let me show you what we got. We're going to chart TRNR. This is interactive strength. We're going to do it on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. Got this opened up to a one day, one year chart. And as you can see, she has been in a serious downtrend the entire year, but it's not as bad as they make it out to be. We've got a high July of last year of $114. Eh, never happened. Remember the reverse stock split, one in 40. They did that June 14th, 2024. Everything prior to that date, all the prices have been multiplied times 40. So to get to the real number here, we've got to divide by 40, which puts us closer to $2.60, $2.75, somewhere in there. From that high, she fell hard down to a legitimate 52-week low of 66 cents, I believe we hit on Thursday. We do see some volume finally coming in over this whole year. There's been nothing to talk about, but it's there right now. Our oscillators aren't great, but we do see some heating up going on. Our RSI was underneath 
our floor. She is now coming up. She is actually climbing. We can see that our MACD is trying to push up and our PPO is just trying to go flat. It's not a great yearly chart, no doubt about that. Taking a look at our six month, four hour view. So we got a ripping high here in February of just about 80 bucks, divide by 40, closer to two bucks. She started down here, they say $25. Come on, divide that by 40, you're closer to 75 cents. So from 75 cents up to two bucks, it was a 300% run. Now this wasn't a breakout, it was just a surge. There's no way she's gonna really try to break out here because the 200 is way too steep. That's a slippery slope. If you try to stay up there, you're gonna slip and fall and normally you fall further than where you started from. And boy, did she ever. She was up here and fell all the way down here. Tried to break through again, still way too early. Fell back down, and it wasn't until we got close to the 200 that we see her starting to get spunky again. She's floating on top of our 200-day haul. She starts pushing towards that 200, punching it over and over again, but still, it is falling. It's still too steep to get on top of. Right down here, she changed her trend. That is to say, she quit falling. She's not climbing yet, but she quit falling. We had a little bit of dip here, but more or less she's going sideways and she's actually making headway doing this. She was underneath all the MAs here, our moving averages. She went through her 200 haul, her 20 day, her 50 day, and she's still flat, but she's showing signs of climbing right now. She's trying to get on top of that 50 day SMA. We can see our PPO is just now starting to climb up. Here comes our MACD trying to cross the signal line. We got green bars showing positive strength and look at our RSI climbing now, coming from 31 all the way up to 58. Jump on down to that one hour view. 20 day, one hour. Now while I'm here, let's grab some SNRs. This is our zone here. SNR, supports and resistances. Looks like we've got one right here. All of this kept falling down to it and bouncing off of it until it broke free. That is at $2.40. We've got another one right there. Not very strong. Oh yeah, it's a little stronger than I thought. See all of this sitting on top of it? And where did this spike come to? Right there. That brings us just under two bucks, $1.97. We've got another one right in this area right there. Oh yeah. All right, I was looking at all of this. That is definitely sitting on top of it. That is sitting on top of it. And this butted its head up against it. So we've got one there at $1.21. We'll let that sit right there. So our 200-day SMA is coming down fast and furious. Took a jump and bump right there, kind of weird. But look what's going on right here. She is starting to level out, folks. She's starting to go flat right now. Now let's zoom in on this. Let me get my arrow so I can show you what I'm looking at, the exciting part. So here she is floating above her 200 haul. The 200 haul is just like your 200 day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but then puts more credence on current prices. So it can relate to the current price, which is why you see the price more chummy with the 200 haul than the 200 day MA. And believe it or not, the 200 haul has as much authority and as much power as that 200 day MA. But the price likes to use it as a partner to launch herself to and through the 200 MA to our breakout. So here she is floating over our 200 haul. She took a dip here, hit this low, and then came back up shooting. Now folks, in my opinion, this is a crouch. A crouch before the pounce, like a cat does. A cat will crouch down just a few inches to jump many feet. That's what it looks like here. She's going sideways, dipping just a little bit. Then she took a drop down to a low through aftermarket, pre-market. This looks like she could get ready to bounce because she suckled up to that 200 haul. She's not falling away. She dipped quick and then jumped and went through everything. The 200 haul, the 20, the 50, tagged the 200, pulled back onto her nine day SMA, has tagged it, and to me, looks like she's ready to run. Every single SMA, our 200 haul, 20, 50, and nine, are all pushing up towards the 200 MA, which is just going flat and is the breakout time. 
when each one of these MAs down here cross the 200, they call that a golden cross. It is a boost of power, a turbo boost. You can normally see a jump in the price, especially when that 20 starts to turn up down here. You can normally see the price run very quickly up over that 20 or that 200. Once the 20 crosses the 200, you will see the price cool down, fall back down to her 200 and dance on it. She wants to make sure it's strong because she's going to build a big building on top of it if she's thinking of climbing. And that's what we're looking for right here, folks. A break through that 200 and a bounce back and a go. Oscillators are outstanding on our one hour chart. Every single one of them is going to the moon. We've got big green bars, lots of strong energy. We were in the overbought on our RSI. We dipped a little, but we're coming back up right now, and we are currently at about 67, looking very sweet. Come on down to our five-day, five-minute. All right, there was your dip, right? So right now, geez, I can see that. If we draw a line, you can see five days ago, she's pretty much where she's at right now, right? She was right here. She took this big dip. She came up, fell back, put a pillar down through this, that tells me I'm going to climb, came back up very quickly, took a bounce, and now she is bouncing off of her strong SMAs, her 20, her 50, her 200 haul, which are all climbing. Now, I do see a slight bend in them, but this is curving up our 200 MA. Our oscillators show strength. Look at this. She came down, scooped right across the floor, and now she's bouncing. Boing, 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 uphill, just like our PPO. RSI is at 56. This looks really good to me on the long charts, folks. It doesn't look bad on the short chart. After hours, look, the whole day, Friday, she was climbing from that low of 66 cents up to 98 cents. That's about a 50% run before she pulled back. And she is on this strong support of 88 cents, pushing off of it right now. Our next support above that is, well, it's a resistance now, is just about a buck 20. Now, there might be something light and soft in between the two, but that's the strong one that we found. Let me jump back to 15 minute. Mm, yeah, we might get one right in this area. That is at 92 cents, and we're at 93. So she is right in the zone, folks, of something to bounce off of. She's got lots of support in this area. Put her feet on and push. We have lots of different catalysts. She's working with MeFit. She's working with Gold Gems. She's working with uh, Crunch. She's got all these climbers being sold in the United States, over in the Gulf area, and looks like they're going to be getting into Europe. They need the help, folks. Their financials aren't looking great. And they say they've got two contracts in the six figures. So these, these should help her in a very big way. Of course, there's more due diligence to do. I invite you to do it. Because the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.